Should I be nervous that I'm in the middle of a forest with no one else around? Probably, but I'm not. Hello and welcome to George Goes Everywhere, the show where we explore the city and see as much of it as we can, all without spending more than $100. I'm in Seattle today, rainy Seattle as you can tell, but that's all right, I got my trusty umbrella here, and I'm actually kind of glad that it's raining so hard. And let me tell you why. Here, let's take a walk. See, I've been to Seattle on a number of occasions, and it's been absolutely beautiful every time I've been here. I've never seen it rain even once. And since Seattle is so known for its rain, it feels kind of weird to have never experienced it. So that's why I'm actually happy that it's raining. It's Seattle and its natural elements, so I say rain more. Bring it on. Let's see what you got, Seattle. Anyway, while I was researching Seattle, one thing I kept coming across was its history as a boom town. Basically, there's been a series of big economic booms centered around a particular industry that has created the city we know today. Right now, Seattle's in the middle of their tech boom, best shown by some companies named Amazon and Microsoft. I've only just heard of them, but apparently they've done pretty well for themselves. In fact, Amazon has something in downtown Seattle called the Seattle Spheres. They're basically indoor rainforests where employees can walk around and it's open to the public a couple days a month. Unfortunately, I'm not here during one of those public days, so I'm not allowed in, but if you plan ahead, maybe you can get in there. Just please let me know how it is. So today I'll be staying under $100, but I'm also gonna be hitting things that all relate to a different Seattle boom and just one bust for good measure. And we start with Seattle's timber slash lumber boom. And there's a couple different ways I could go for this one. I could check out some totem poles, which are not just timber, but an icon of the Pacific Northwest. And even better, these are at a local pizza place, so I can grab a slice while I'm here. And that's cool, but there's something else tree related that caught my eye. Ever been up in a treehouse? Because I sure haven't, and it's a shame, really. Childhood me would be livid if he knew that adult me hadn't been in a treehouse by now. Well, I think it's time to fix that. So I've come to Treehouse Point, which is just outside the city, and they have all kinds of amazing treehouses. It's actually a bed and breakfast, so you can stay here if you want. But if not, they also offer tours, which is exactly what I'm here to do. And this place is also perched right above a river here, so it's just nothing but forest and river. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's great. Get the treehouse at night, river during the day. And as you can see, the rain has subsided, so there's no real need for an umbrella, which is good, because I'm actually not a huge fan of umbrellas. I'm tall, and so when people use umbrellas, they have a tendency to kind of stab me in the face, so... I'm just as glad to not have to need one. I've checked out the property, but now it's time for the moment of truth. It's time to actually go inside one of the tree houses. Oh my God. This is so cool. Wow, can you imagine actually staying here? Usually having a window that looks directly out onto a tree trunk would be a bad thing, but not here. Here it's a feature. This place is something else. This is the nicest hotel room I've ever been in, even before you consider that it's a tree house. It's a tree house, it's in the trees, the trees are right there. We got lights, we got heat, we got indoor plumbing. It's just, it's amazing, this is incredible. I don't wanna just stay here, I want to live here. I would love nothing more than to stay here for days or even weeks, but like I said, I'm not actually staying here, I'm just touring it, so unfortunately, I have to leave. But now that we've seen Seattle's timber boom, let's go from the trees to the water and talk about its shipbuilding boom. See, there's something here called the Ballard Locks, and it's basically as close as I'm gonna get to a ship without actually setting foot on one. This was built to allow boats to navigate the waters while preventing the saltwater Puget Sound from getting into the fresh water of Lake Union. So here's a quick rundown of how it works. These doors open and the ships come through here where the water level is low. Then the water level in this middle part will rise. Then those doors on the other end will open and the ships will exit out that way. You know, I thought this would be cool, but it's actually even cooler than I thought. It's just an incredible feat of engineering. And the fact that it's free and open to the public is even better. And as you can see, the weather is still beautiful. Seattle's really not cooperating with my desire to see it in the rain. There's another part here that's equal parts impressive and adorable. It's called the fish ladder and it allows salmon to travel through the locks. But even better, there's a window where you can go and see the fish up close. There's not a lot of them here because it's the off season, but the ones that are here are just kind of chilling, which is good. You can get a good look at them. There's even a little botanical garden here adjacent to the locks. This is a really cool place to just walk around, have a seat, relax. But I think I'm about done here, so let's go from the water to the sky and talk about Seattle's Boeing boom. Boeing has a huge presence in Seattle. Their nearby factory is one of the largest buildings in the world by volume. So to honor that connection, I've come to the Museum of Flight, which is a pretty big building in its own right. I mean, just look at this place. And this is right up my alley because I'm kind of a plane geek. It kind of goes hand in hand with a love of travel. And this place is so huge, it can actually be tough to know where to begin. So let's start with a quick overview. This part is all about the Apollo space program. They have a control tower that overlooks the runway. There's the Great Airplane Gallery. There's the World War I exhibit. And here's the World War II wing. Here's the space shuttle that you can actually walk around in. And the outdoor aviation pavilion. Okay, they got a simulator here we can try to land on the moon. Let's see if I have what it takes. No. No, no. Oh, it crashed so hard. Ugh. I suppose it's kind of poetic that Seattle had both a shipbuilding boom and an airplane boom. It's just the king of transportation all around. This place has an original World War I plane, which the guy says is very rare. And I mean, it looks like it's made out of paper mache. It's like someone's school project. So this is the Air Force One that was used by Eisenhower and LBJ. And I gotta say, it's still pretty swanky. You have the presidential stateroom, the conference room, 
You got some bunk beds. I would not mind taking a long flight in this. And weather update, it's actually pretty nice out right now. There's not a drop of rain to be found, so if I want to see some more Seattle rain, my luck's gonna have to change. But now that we've seen some planes, let's go from the sky to the basement and talk about the Seattle underground. See, now that we've talked about some Seattle booms, I want to mix things up and talk about a Seattle bust, because after the great Seattle fire of the late 1800s, the streets were regraded to be one or two stories higher than they were, and that has created what is now known as the Seattle underground. It's a tourist attraction now, but back in the day, it was a haven for illegal activity. So this combines two of my favorite things, sordid, unsavory history and staying out of the sun. Now, there's very little ventilation down there, so I'm going to have to put on a mask, but I'm excited about this. I've told multiple friends that I'm coming here, and they're all envious, so let's go make my friends jealous. So we go from the inside, which is an old building, to the outside, where we are literally underneath the sidewalk above us. So it's like a second sidewalk below the real sidewalk. It's a backup sidewalk. Oh, they even got a toilet down here. If you gotta go, they got you covered. Low beam, watch your head. Another low beam, watch my head. Low archway, watch my head. And what's interesting is that as you walk around this neighborhood, you can actually see old skylights in the sidewalks here. This would allow light to actually go into the underground. But then you see other skylights where they've been paved over, and it's just something I would never have noticed, but it's just right there in front of you. But after our little detour into the Seattle underground, let's go from the basement to the orchard and talk about apples. That is because Washington produces over half the nation's apples. This is admittedly more of a Washington state boom than a Seattle boom, but I'm counting it anyway. But since it's the apple capital of the country, it only makes sense to come to the Seattle Cider Company and try some hard cider. And I'm meeting up with Seattle local Matt Broussard. He's a professional chef who makes super popular videos online, which is good because I don't have the most refined palate, so it'll be nice to taste these with someone who knows what he's talking about. Bourbon barrel basil mix. That uh, bit of a tongue twister. It just tastes weird with that basil in there. Yeah, it might be better if it was just bourbon. Yeah, I kind of like hot. this though. Is it basil or basil? Is it basil or basil? I don't know. Is I call it, it basil. Is it apricot or apricot? It's apricot. It's either or. I'm taking a stand on, on, on apricot. It's not apricot. Pumpkin spice cider. The guy who works here was saying that he was very reluctant to embrace this one, but... I mean, would you? It's pumpkin spice. I, I would not embrace it if I, were, if I owned a cider. Oh, I, I see what he means. It's more of an apple crumble. A dessert cider? You don't need port wine, just have pumpkin spice cider. I've never really liked cider. It's always been kind of a little too sweet for me, but I think they might have converted me here because these are kind of, they're not too sweet. They're kind of dry. And these are like, this is a cider I can get behind. So I think they might have changed my opinion on cider. Yeah, also even this pumpkin spice one, I was expecting it to be really sugary, but it's not. They're all like very nice. Yeah. So the sun is starting to set. Seattle teased me with some light rain earlier, but it's cleared up since then and has been actually pretty beautiful if it's had windy. So I guess I'm just going to have to accept that Seattle's weather is always going to be nice while I'm here. Now this is more like it. 